Okay, so I decided to make this video uh, on the Polaris exhaust valves because I went online looking at uh, information on this particular one. This is off of a 2015 Pro S 600 uh, Polaris switchback. Uh, I've noticed that there seems to be a lot of missing information. People always seem to clean this end of the valve, and of course I've already done this one just, you know, for illustration purposes. Uh, I've already cleaned everything here. But I just wanted to go through and, and hit on a few of the points that other people seem to be missing. Everyone seems to clean this end of it and leave it at that. There's a couple guys that are going into this end, and they're cleaning out underneath the bellows, the diaphragm. But they're missing... I don't know if they're afraid to take them apart or they don't know how or they don't have the uh, uh, experience or equipment to do it whatever the case may be but they're not taking them apart so I figured I would go ahead and do that and I actually discovered something unique on this particular valve um, so anyway cover comes off spring comes off like I said I've already taken this apart so <clears throat> unscrew this end and the diaphragm comes off and of course normally that's really nasty underneath there usually and on the valves I've dealt with in the past this washer just is press fit you can just pull it off and heat it up a little bit maybe and just pull it off so I tried that with this one and of course it didn't work um, tried heating it up tried to knock it off of there actually put it in the press and I actually you can see I had to grind this back straight again I did actually bend it a little bit. Um, that's because it unscrews, and I did not know that. You would think if they were going to make something that unscrews, they'd put flats on it or something so you could grab a hold of it with a wrench. But of course, none of that here. But anyway, heat it up a little bit with a torch, grab a hold of it with a pair of uh, pliers, slip joints, or whatever, and it will unscrew. So anyway, after I figured that out, now I can get it apart. Now that it's completely apart, it is really easy to clean everywhere around here, even the backside and these areas that are more difficult to get to with it completely apart. I don't know why people aren't doing that. Uh, this is all red Loctite into the shaft. This is red Loctited. The nut is red Loctited onto here. That stuff can be hard to deal with sometimes, but if you just warm it up, if you're gonna replace the bellows anyway, this, this end came off easy enough. This one didn't, but I already had the bellows out of the way, so the heat didn't matter. But if you're in there and you're gonna replace the bellows, you can get these for like 10 or $15. Uh, so they're cheap enough to replace, that's no big deal either. Um, but one of the big things everybody seems to miss is, they don't clean out the two little holes that are inside here. So you actually have to squirt these out. They come through to here. You gotta squirt them out, clean them out. I've actually had before to actually push a drill through them. That's how nasty they were. But you wanna actually be able to see, and this is my check as I can see light through it. I don't know if I can get the angle right. Whoops. So then, both holes. You get it good and cleaned out. Same thing here. That way you make sure that those holes are open. Those holes, that's what is where the vacuum from the engine pulls down, uh, sorry, pushes up on the diaphragm. That's what actually lifts the valve, is, is the vacuum that's on this side of it. The other side, this side here, is actually vented out after the, uh, after the solenoid. <laughs> so anyway, I just figured I would touch on a few things that it seems like people are always uh, either not doing or skipping over if they do go into this side of the valve. So if you're not doing this part of it, it's really, yes, you're preventing the valve from sticking, 
but eventually these can get plugged up to the point that it won't work either. So 100% disassemble, clean out the holes, clean off the valve, then you go back together with red Loctite. And as everybody has pointed out, and it seems like everybody's on board, make sure that when it goes back together, either you put the cap on afterwards, after it's back in the engine, or you make sure that it's lined up when you put it back together. Because it will torque the diaphragm if you're not lined up and you go to push it back in the engine cockeyed. Anyway, just touched on a few points. Seems like everybody misses. Hope it helps anyone out there. Oh, and like I said, this was 2015 uh, Polaris Pro S switchback with a 600. I imagine the 800 is probably the same. That was a unique find to me. All right, have a good one.